Where should I get started? Several weeks ago, my wife insisted that I go to get my physical. So I've been telling Damien for the past couple of months how he needs to go to the doctor to get a yearly checkup. And when he went around um, to his guy friends, no one went to the doctor. And I remember learning this in class that most men don't go to the doctor. But to actually see it in reality, I was like, wow, we have to have men getting into the habit of trusting the doctors and also going to know their health status because a lot of diseases can be cured if there's early detection. Now, I know sometimes as men and husbands, we don't like going to the doctor, but I believe this visit changed my life forever. So on March 4th, I, I go to the doctor and everything was normal. You know, I fill out all the paperwork and I go to the back and they take all my vitals and my height, my weight and everything, everything was normal. They asked me the simple questions is, you know, how's your mother's health, how's your, your dad? And I told him my father was deceased. 2018, he passed away from colon cancer. The doctor looked into my mouth to make sure that there was no sores there and also felt my stomach area to make sure there was no bumps. I did get a tetanus shot that I was very upset about, but it was time to go to the lab and get my blood drawn. As I was in the lab, I was getting prepped to get my blood drawn and I was looking at the different samples of other patients blood and I saw that they were pretty light so when the nurse started to draw blood from my arm I looked at that first valve that she was drawing the blood into and I noticed that my blood was darker than everybody else's when I looked around at the other samples everybody's blood was lighter than mine but I didn't really pay it any attention, but I did mention it to my wife after I texted her and told her that I was alive. And I, and I told her, I said, look, you know, everything went fine and everything went great, but my blood was darker than everybody else's. So fast forward to March 10th. I was at home just doing some work and I received an email from our doctor and it was the health update. And I started to look in that email and something came over me. I was kind of nervous because, you know, I, this is my first time receiving a, a health update from this particular doctor. And I was scrolling down and just looking down the page and then I saw the word problem. And then there was this long P word and again, I haven't went back and looked at that word clearly. I don't know how to pronounce it but I took that word, copied it, and pasted it into Google. And the words attached to that word was not good. Things like lupus and, and cancer and just bad words, just words of death. And I quickly closed the computer and within a couple minutes, the doctor calls. And the doctor said, uh, can we talk? And so I was just listening to the doctor and, and the question that came out of the doctor's mouth was, has anybody told you that you have a low white blood count before? And I told the doctor, no, I never had a doctor tell me that my blood count, my white blood count was low. And then the doctor kept on talking and it was like a fog, like you, you hear the doctor talking, but you don't. And I can't really explain it, but it, it was crazy the words that was coming out of this doctor's mouth and, and was encouraging in one moment, but the doctor already contacted a specialist, a blood specialist on my behalf. And soon after that, she said, you might have a mysterious virus in your body and we have to find it, or it might be leukemia. And my whole world just crashed. It's like, oh my gosh, like I cannot die. I cannot die. The doctor asked me if I had any other questions and hung up the phone. And I soon looked at my phone and I saw that my wife was coming home very, very soon, but I couldn't just wait. So I picked up the phone and I called her and she was literally walking up the stairs into our place. 
And when she walked through the door, I just gave her the news. I told her something's wrong. My health update just came back and it's just not good. I remember Damien calling me right when I was walking in the door and I can tell something was wrong. And he hung up the phone and I opened the door and he dropped the news on me. And I was so shocked. It was tons of um, thoughts that raced through my mind. But I had to look at the email and the lab reports myself. So I led my wife to the computer and showed her the email and, and the portal of all the stuff the doctor was saying. And I walked away and was just pacing around the house. It's like, man, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? You know, my, my whole world is just, just shaking at this moment. And I don't know what my wife was doing. She might have been researching herself. Now, I'm not going to lie. My first instinct was to research. But when I saw all the negative um, diagnosis and prognosis and all that, I, was, I said to myself, do not look anymore. Instead, we are going to believe God and search the truth instead of looking at facts or possible facts. But when I came back to the computer, she said, we're going to get through this. We are going to get through this. This is just a journey. And she looked at my cholesterol and my vitamin D was low. And, and she already started to put a plan together on how I should eat better. So after dinner, we started to pray. We got the house ready for just prayer. and We turned some music on, some worship music on. My wife asked me what I wanted to play and, and just started worshiping God and just try to set the atmosphere for just a miracle. And then we pulled out our books from RTF and that's Restoring the Foundation, uh, where we learned how to pray through things, whether it's sickness or anxiety or depression through IHOP and it's the International House of Prayer. And one of the first things we did was do a submission prayer and just submit our lives to Christ. And, and next we went through uh, repenting for our ancestors' sins and in our sins and in literally casting, rebuking, and renouncing all sickness and disease and illness off of our lives, both of our lives, especially from our bloodline. And we talked about cancer, we, we talked about leukemia, lupus, every single disease that we could think about and it was on that piece of paper. We renounced it, we rebuked it, and we cast it out of our bloodline. And, and then we played a song by Maverick City called The Blood Still Works. And we just worshiped God and we worshiped God and we worshiped God. And, and I don't know who it was, it might have been myself or my wife, but we had this word of knowledge of a blood transfusion. And so we prayed that God would give me a blood transfusion. And we wanted Jesus' blood in our veins. And so we prayed that. And, and I just felt that God was just really moving. And then God brought me to a memory a couple years ago where I was just laying in bed and he was just speaking over my life and and how I was going to be a speaker one day and, and where I was going to speak at this particular time. And God brought that to my remembrance and asked me a simple question. I felt it as an impression. He asked me, has this event happened yet? And my clear answer was no, I haven't done this yet. And that's it. That's all God said. And I was like, wow, I know I'm going to get through this. I know I'm going to get through this. One of the things that came to me as we was praying was to ask my wife, what are you praying for tomorrow? You see, my wife has been reading this book by, I think the author name is Miss Stormy O'Martian, I believe, um, Prayers of a Powerful Wife or something like that. And, and my wife goes and gets the book and, oh my goodness. The next day, which I had to go back and and get some more blood drawn the next day was March 11th and 
the next day in her book, she was praying for my health. So me and some of my close friends were reading this book, The Power of a Praying Wife, beginning March 1st. And so Damien asked me, what are y'all reading tomorrow? And when I flipped and looked at the 11th day, it was his health. And I knew that God was orchestrating this since the foundation of the earth. And prior to that, moment on Sunday, March 7th, me and Damien, we do a Bible study together where I learn something and teach it to him and he studies something and teaches it to me. And that specific Sunday, we talked about trust and healing. And so we learned that trust in the Hebrew image meant even in chaos, I am protected. And Damien talks about the healing that with the story of Lazarus, Martha brought the problem to Jesus but it was, she left it up to Jesus to decide what to do. And so when we saw this and knew that we just studied that word, so we decided that we were gonna bring this problem to Jesus and allow him to decide what to do with it. And if I'm being transparent, I thought that this would be a long journey. I knew that we would get through it, but I just didn't know what that would look like and what the journey would look like. But I knew we could trust God because even in chaos, we were going to be protected. Isn't that amazing? Like, God knew to have my wife pray for my health. And so I was texting a couple of my friends and my community. Um, I was just in a group, a radical mentor group with my church. And I was texting these guys and they was just praying for me. Several of them got on the phone with me and we prayed and one of them in particular, and I didn't tell them what was going on with me, but one of them in particular were praying for my blood and said, when I go back to the doctor, that your blood will be fine, and which was, I guess, a word of knowledge for him as well. And so I was just encouraged. I was encouraged. I also picked up the, the book by John Eckhart, just praying for healing over myself all night so that night i couldn't sleep <laughs> obviously i was just so much stuff was going through my head um the journey six weeks i was like we're going to have a six week journey where we're just going to eat right and just go to other doctors and i was planning all these things in my head and honestly i only got about two to three hours of sleep i woke up and again my wife went out there and prayed for me that morning and, and just blessed me and, and, and left for work. I ate a little bit and I prayed over myself. I called my mother and she prayed over me as well. And I headed to the doctor around eight o'clock, um, went straight in, a couple minutes, they pulled me back to the lab. And the nurse used this arm this time and started to draw my blood. Now, this time they ordered six samples of my blood. And again, I do not like looking at my blood but I noticed something when that first valve went to the side, I peeked at it and the blood was lighter. <laughs> the blood was lighter and I was like, man, this is lighter than the first time. And so I left and I was encouraged and I actually bumped into the doctor and the doctor was kind of nervous talking to me and I was like, I'm, I'm about to check out and say, okay, we're gonna see you soon. And I left and I texted my wife I looked at my blood and it was lighter. And I received a text back and she was like, I believe that God has healed you. He's healing you. So when Damien texted me that his blood was lighter, I remembered him saying the first time that his blood was really dark red. Now at that moment, he thought that just meant his blood was healthier, <laughs> you know, was strong, he had strong blood. But then I remembered, wait, his red blood cell count was really high, just like his white blood cell counts were really low. And so I said, red, dark, red blood, high red blood cells. If his blood was lighter, that meant God was healing him and that he was healed. And so I told him, God is already healing you. We just have to have faith. And so that whole day I was, I was encouraged. Honestly, I was encouraged. I was still 
you know, exercising, eating right that day, didn't do a lot of work that day, just prayed a lot, read Psalms 91 over myself during the day, talked to a, a couple of my, my guys and just, they were encouraging me that it was just a distraction. You're healed, you're healed. So March 12th, around two or three o'clock, my wife just came home from a lunch with her mother and her sister. The phone rang and I saw the number and I knew it was the doctor. And the doctor said, Damien, can you talk? It's like, obviously I can talk if I can pick up the phone right now. And the doctor said something that again, changed my life forever. The doctor was very brief and said, we took the samples again. Damien and I don't know what happened, but your samples are completely normal. <sighs> completely normal. Jesus healed me. He healed me. And as soon as the doctor said that, I said, oh, I know. And the doctor said, what do you mean you know? Did you go on the portal and see that I wrote all the stuff out already? I was like, no, I just knew that I was healed. I knew that I was okay. And the doctor continued to apologize. I'm so sorry, the stuff that I said the other day, and I know that I scared you and there was some scary stuff. And I said, no, 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 you don't need to apologize. You see, what happened was that I, I have a, a community around me, a, a spiritual community around me, and we prayed, and, and, and we prayed that God would heal me, and, and he did. So, Doc, <laughs> prayer works. And the doctor said, I guess it does. Do you have any more questions for me? I was like, no, Doc, I don't have anything else to tell you. And the doctor said, well, I, I guess we'll see you at your next appointment. I rushed inside, so I took that phone call outside and I rushed inside and my wife was on the phone with her mother. And so on that day, I was talking to my mom about some important news and Damien comes in the room and he says, I'm healed, but I'm talking to my mom and I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on. And then like about 20 seconds later, I'm like, wait mom, hold on one moment. And I dropped the phone <laughs> on the bed and I said, I'm healed. <laughs> I'm completely healed. I put my mom on hold and I ran to Damien. I said, wait, you're healed? He said, yes. The doctor just called and said, all my blood levels are completely normal. And I was overjoyed at that moment. I couldn't believe it, but I can believe it because Jesus is just that good that even in one day after him receiving that news and getting his blood drawn the next day he was already healed that's just how powerful the blood of Jesus is And so some of y'all might not know, but me and Damien are relatively newlyweds. We've been married for about 18 months. And so in our vows, it's popular to say in sickness and in health. But during those vows, we tend to think of in the health. And maybe the sickness might come later when we're older. But when that happens early in the marriage, it kind of rocks your foundation. But if your foundation is on Christ, Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals, that's a pretty firm foundation. And so I encourage you, if you or a loved one, especially your spouse is sick, hold on to the promises. The Hebrew word picture for Rapha is commanding strength to the man. And so where there is weakness or an opening in the body, a wound, God is gonna command strength to that. He sent the word and he healed them. And so I encourage you to stand strong on the word that by his stripes, we are healed. It doesn't matter how little or how big, just trust God that he will bring the healing. We don't know how soon or what that might look like, but know that he is Jehovah Rapha even to this day.
There was a story in Mark chapter 2 where Jesus is preaching in a house in a city of Capernaum. Four men brought a friend who was paralyzed on a mat to the house, but there was no room to get into the door. So they climbed up the side of the house and the Bible says they dug into the roof, opened up the roof, lowered the man on the mat in front of Jesus. Jesus looked at the man and said, because of their faith, I will heal you. Now, I know that there are so many people out here who watch this who would want it just to be encouraged. But there are others of you who need a touch and a healing from Jesus. And I want to pray for you because I truly believe and even my wife, we believe that God still heals today. So the first thing I want to do is pray a submission prayer over you. I'm going to say it kind of slow for you. I'm going to read it. But I want you to repeat after me. And right after that, I want you just to receive. I don't want you to pray in the spirit. I just want you to receive the prayer. And I'm going to pray over your whole body that God heals you today. Now, this is the submission prayer. Please pray with me. Lord, I am here because I need your help. I ask you to heal and deliver me and put a fresh hope in my life. Lord, help me take responsibility for all that is mine. Open my eyes to every way I have been blind. Lord, I confess my sins before you. I confess the sins of my ancestors. I choose to not hold them responsible for the effects of their sins on my life. I release them from any way I blame them for my sins. I cancel all legal rights of demons to oppress me or my descendants because of my ancestors' sins. Lord, you are my deliverer. Set me free from every demon that has influenced or tormented me in my current issue. I choose to use the authority you have given me over all the power of the enemy. I do choose to be totally set free and to continue to walk in that freedom. Holy Spirit, be the revealer of truth and be my comforter. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Please repeat after me. Jesus, I rebuke and renounce every demon that's oppressing my mind, my eyes, my tongue, my heart, my will, my emotions, my sexual character, and my body in Jesus' name. Now, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, that you hear our prayers. You are a mighty God and you do the impossible. So right now, I pray for my brothers and sisters who have any cell issues, any abnormal cell issue, any sickle cell anemia. Right now, in the name of Jesus, be healed in Jesus name. I pray against and I bind and I break and I cancel every spirit of cancer right now that is found in the veins, that is found in the blood, any blood issues right now in Jesus name. I cancel you and I cast you into the abyss right now. I cancel any bone cancers right now in Jesus name. I pray right now for people who have problems with their brains, any double mindedness, any cancer in the brain, any eye problems, God, any eye cancers, anything that's dealing with the sinuses, God, be healed in Jesus name. Any mouth cancer right now in Jesus name, be healed in Jesus name. I pray for the throat, God, any throat cancer, be healed in Jesus name. Any lymph nodes, God, any anything that's dealing with the thyroid right now in Jesus name. I pray for healing, healing right now. Come to them right now in Jesus name. I pray for the neck as well, God. Anything that's dealing with the neck, any neck pains right now, God, any back pains, any back issues, any back cancer right now in Jesus name. I pray for it and I cancel it. I cancel the assignment right now in Jesus name. God, I pray right now for anybody who's having digestive systems, uh, problems with swallowing right now, be healed 
right now in Jesus name. Anything with the stomach, any barren wounds right now, you will be able to have babies right now in Jesus name. Anything that's dealing with the stomach issues, any any cancers in the stomach right now, any cancers in the skin right now. We pray against lupus and leukemia right now. We cancel your assignment. We rebuke you and we break the assignment right now off the people of God right now in Jesus name. God, we pray for anything, uh, especially with the pancreas right now, any cancers in the pancreas. We pray for the spleen right now in Jesus name, God. We pray for the uterus for women right now in Jesus name, God. We pray for the legs, God. We pray for the knees, God. We pray for the feet right now in Jesus' name. Now, God, we pray for any chronic illnesses right now, God. Any chronic illness, uh, any pain or aches in the ear, God. Any pain or aches in the teeth, God. We pray right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, any pains or aches right now be gone in Jesus' name be gone in Jesus name any colds any flus any coronavirus right now in Jesus name be gone in Jesus name we pray against any virus in the body that is hiding any pain that is hiding God be gone in Jesus name low blood pressure God high blood pressure God any vitamin D deficiencies any deficiencies at all God any uh, deficiencies with iron right now God any heart disease any heart attacks God right now in Jesus name God we pray right now for strokes right now arthritis right now any insomnia God or any Alzheimer's disease right now in Jesus name God we appropriate right now the cross the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross God and we apply the blood of Jesus right now on your people right now in Jesus name and we come against any witchcraft any control any pride right now any unforgiveness right now in Jesus name we cancel that assignment any bitterness right now in Jesus name we tell you to go in Jesus name we believe that the children's bread is healing and deliverance so right now in the name of Jesus we tell the enemy to loose the people of God they are free they are set free and they are whole right now they are whole right now they are healed right now in Jesus name and Holy Spirit right now God fill them up with the gifts of the Spirit God and the fruit of the Spirit of God right now we celebrate all the healings that we will hear from this prayer God we give you all the glory and all the praise it's in Jesus mighty name that we pray amen Amen and amen. God bless you.